A U.S. panel investigating last year's accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in Japan has criticized the lack of preparedness for emergencies. The U.S. National Academy of Sciences set up the panel in July to study the lessons from the accident. Officials from the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, told the panel that the March 11th tsunami was bigger than the plant was designed to withstand. They said company officials were not aware that a backup cooling system was not working after the loss of power sources. An expert pointed out that there were no experts at the plant who could advise on emergency cooling at the time of the accident, like they do in the United States. A representative from an organization of nuclear plant operators criticized safety standards in Japan. This event reveals some things about the way business was done or, or uh, lack of preparation for uh, things that are important for nuclear safety that had not been thought possible before. The United States introduced new measures at nuclear plants after the September 11th attacks in 2001. It became mandatory for plants to have contingency manuals and additional backup power systems. Japan has decided to offer $6 million in total to the U.S. and Canadian governments to help dispose of debris from the tsunami that hit northeastern Japan on March 11th last year. About one and a half million tons of wreckage is believed to have been washed into the Pacific Ocean after the tsunami, and some of it has already reached the Pacific coast of North America. It's estimated that more marine debris will wash ashore the coastline of U.S. and Canadian states, such as Alaska and Washington, starting from October. The Japanese government had been considering ways to cover a share of the costs of disposal as a way to return the support the U.S. and Canada provided for victims of last year's disaster in Japan. But there are no international rules stipulating how countries should share the costs of disposing of marine debris whose origins are difficult to identify. The Japanese government eventually decided to provide the two countries with six million dollars as goodwill sympathy money to help dispose of the debris. The Japanese government says it's making progress in eliminating the debris caused by last year's disaster. The earthquake and tsunami generated some 18 million tons of waste across three prefectures in northeastern Japan. Japan's environment minister Goshi Hosono says nearly 25 percent of the debris in Iwate, Miyagi and Fukushima prefectures have been incinerated, buried or recycled. The ministry says it's making progress in striking agreements with other prefectures to take in part of the waste. But officials also report delays in recycling incombustible debris. Hosono says he wants to accelerate the program by involving more prefectures. The government has given itself two years to complete the disposal.
people responsible for disaster preparedness in Japan have drawn up a picture of widespread flooding in Tokyo. Their scenario shows floodwaters washing down residential streets and through business districts. The government council agreed on a set of guidelines on how to prepare and react. The Council of Cabinet Ministers and Disaster Prevention Officials drew out the recommendations. They call on central and local governments to coordinate efforts to deal with the damage. They estimate residential, commercial and business districts would be flooded if the banks of the Arakawa River in northern Tokyo were to collapse. In the worst case scenario, as many as 2,000 people could lose their lives. Around 860,000 people could be stranded on rooftops and other high places. Government experts estimate that more than one million people live in areas prone to flooding. The guidelines call on local governments to re-examine their evacuation plans and the conditions for issuing evacuation orders. The recommendations say municipalities should coordinate their efforts to prepare evacuation facilities. They point out that residents may not be able to return home for a long time in the event of widespread flooding. Japan's leader is also running to represent his party again in a future election. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda first has to win re-election as head of the ruling Democratic Party. DPJ members will vote in two weeks' time. Noda announced his candidacy Friday. He expressed his determination to lead Japan as it faces a number of pressing problems. There are tasks that have yet to be finished and cannot be left as they stand. I bear the responsibility of dealing with Japan's many challenges. They include a comprehensive reform of the tax and social security systems, as well as leading the country to recovery. I want to continue carrying the responsibility of what this country needs to achieve now and in the future. Noda has led efforts to double the consumption tax to 10 percent by 2015. He admitted there were some difficult times during the current session of the Diet, but he says he has proven it is possible to work with opposition parties and vow to bring about change with determination. Speaking of Japan's fiscal situation, the country is facing a possible lack of funding. Cabinet ministers decided to limit a budget execution. That's because lawmakers cannot agree to pass a bill for issuing debt-covering bonds before the current diet session ends this weekend. The ministers agreed to postpone some of the tax grants for municipalities. They will also cut university subsidies to less than half. The government will be unable to secure over $480 billion without issuing debt-covering bonds. That's more than 40% of the total budget for this fiscal year through March 2013. Finance ministry officials say spending reductions will allow them to keep state funds available until at least the end of November.